Welcome back, my name is Kaz, this time it's solo Amio, by myself, alone, here, for you, doing Odin Sphere, and learning. Let's continue our lesson of the nation's history. history. A nightmare befell the land, and soon afterward, the Aesir and the Vanir began a war over the cauldron. The Aesir were exhausted from the war with our nation, and the Vanir defeated them. The Aesir withdrew, but after finding the Ring of Titrell that the fairies used to control the cauldron, both countries began a long war to control this area. Hmm? What's wrong? <sighs> What's wrong is that you're teaching current events, not history, buddy. Hello, Princess. I want my tuition Business back. Business is going very well. I've come back to stock up. With this war going on, it seems that the fairy kingdom's a tad unstable. You know, I never noticed, but he has flowers in front of him. I wonder why I can't buy flowers. Anyway, he doesn't have anything I want right now, either. A great storm has raged oh. against our land ever since the disaster. It seems that there's a tremendous amount of magical energy around the cauldron. It's probably because the cauldron's still active. I wonder if our country will ever be like it was before. A great... Yeah, and then you guys can have bodies. Human bodies. Not the little crappy rabbit bodies that you have that can't even do anything. <laughs> you little jerks. She went to the netherworld with that sorcerer? This is so dangerous. Oh, I'm so nervous. Well, she got out okay. <sighs> Fine. He may still be nearby. She's been looking gloomy ever since she returned. From the netherworld. Where you die. If I may ask, why are you so frightened? Just got out of the netherworld. My grandfather. King Valentine has escaped the netherworld. The deceased king? But how? Yeah, he left. My grandfather was interested in the cauldron. If that is true, it must surely refer to the great cauldron that appears in the prophecies. Is this the beginning of the end of the world? I do not know. It is impossible to speculate the motives of a king who has escaped the netherworld. You have such great wisdom. Do you know of any way to prevent this destruction, father? Hmm. A single ring controls the cauldron. The ring that my grandfather was wearing? Indeed, the ring of Titrell. If oh, that, that ring is canard. used to stop the cauldron, no one can restart it, not even a king. Where is this ring now? It's in the fairy kingdom, where the cauldron has been taken. I shall sneak in and recover the ring. What are you saying? Velvet! I would rather fight against death than wait for my cursed destiny to take me. I know a man who can magically send himself there. If I asked him... If you are discovered, all Puka will be labeled as criminals. Please, do not tell anyone of this. I don't want anyone else involved. Moving in the shadows will not hide you from the fairies for long. You're probably also that going to have to change clothes. That is when this shall protect me. Oh, the chain, right. Anyway, Velvet's plan here is to, uh, sneak into the fairy kingdom and steal their ring. One ring particular she is really really poorly suited to doing yep so this immediately becomes a fight against you know everyone around including these guys hey oh I have just barely not enough to one shot them with that homing attack and sooner or later, I will get enough of a, uh, of a cipher level to be able to do that. And the, the whole the whole area becomes a lot easier when you can. 
Now that also depends on which ring area you go to, not the ring control, I just realized it. You know, because they're all hoops and they're connected and with the old strings linking together and whatnot. Yeah. Yeah, not only will you be able to use the homing attack and get the green guys dead pretty easily, but also the uh, like lesser fairies, the like non magic wielding fairies, they'll also go down with a homing shot, so you can just sort of open up with killing a whole bunch of them with that one shot, and then follow it up with whatever other attacks you want for the more powerful ones. I've let myself do a little more magic with Velvet than with the others. For one, the Cyclone looks, coo looks cooler. It's you know, red to match your Cypher. And for another, I, you know, I'm probably deluding myself with this, but I, I think to myself that it's more powerful. At, at the very least, it's powerful relative to the strikes that she's doing, each of which is you know, kind of kind of lame. She's no Kratos, that's for sure. Although, she's wearing about as, as much clothing as Kratos, all told. I don't know, maybe a little more. Maybe the hood counts. Okay, the hood. The hood! You got me there. You... Okay, well, uh, this, this is something I should come clean about. I'm not technically alone. Because I have here my uh, backup database of Medibots AI here um, in this in this drive, and there's a sort of shrine fetish picture of of Kiwi. It's tasteful. It's tasteful. I know that she's gonna watch this and she'll be like, "Kaz, you shouldn't say that." And I'll be like, "Well, well, okay. You know, you have your Totoro and I have my you. So that's that's how we that's how we do here." On, on the internet, and probably other places. But the point is, if I if I say something to someone, it sounds like I'm saying it to someone. It's either to the the database that contains Medibot's backup AI, or the backup database that contains Medibot AI. This is a back and forth and back. And forth. It's a database, and it's also very boring as as far as AIs go. I mean, it's much more interesting when the the AI has something to actually search. Yeah, he's, he's not very talkative right now, you see. But the, but the point is, they, I have those here, so if I, if I say an idle phrase or something directed at someone, it's probably not at you, but rather at them. Of course, also possibly at you, now that I think about it, because you're also there and, and watching. The Paladin guys here are really tough to fight. It, it might not look like it, but you know, he, I'm sitting here at 10 hit points, mostly because of them. Because especially the, the white ones, who can actually take a hit, they take more damage before you knock them back. So it's very difficult to knock them out of whatever they're trying to do, and they can run really quickly and just sort of decide to attack pretty much whenever they want. Ooh, a human! Ooh. I'm lost in this incredible forest. It must be the fairy forest I've heard about. This guy sounds like one of those people who tries to get you to buy something that, and you know, it doesn't appear like a salesman at first. Okay, you know, you go to a bar and then this, this pretty girl says, buy me a drink, buy me a really specific drink. Have you ever had one of this very specific, and you know, they're obviously they're hired by the company and you to promote that kind of thing. They're not actually friendly towards you and they actually think that you're ugly and kind of a little stupid. But, that's the tactic. So here's this guy who says, I'm lost in this incredible forest! <laughs> it's like, well... <laughs> He's like a travel agent, that's what it is. That would actually be really cool for travel agents. Maybe this unicorn knight is a travel agent. Maybe he's just a dick. He has a load of backup, too. Look at all these guys! Of course, his, his attacks are... well, okay, most of his attacks come out pretty slowly. So, you know, he, he trundles along. That motion can only be described as trundling. Look at him. And then you can push him back with the forward part of the combo, and that takes him pretty much out of it. That was actually kind of cute. My, my character model, because of the... Cyclone was over the Caratier, and you heard the ticking noise. That was the the tick happens whenever you walk past an item, but don't pick it up for the little text box describing the item to appear. 
It's like one of those links that you, you know, that you click on or you hover over and it like grows to like out of your mouse range and then flickers right back. That kind of thing. I mentioned that because my inventory is so cramped right now that I'm kind of hung up on getting all of my items in there. Alright, second mini boss fight. This time, I am in significantly more trouble. One unicorn knight, and like dudes, not so bad. Two of them though, and effectively all of their attacks come out twice as fast, including the leaping attack, which comes out very fast on its own. So I'm probably going to be taking, yeah, another one of those. The only fortunate part about fighting two Unicorn Knights at once, rather than the one with the backup guys, is that these guys get backed up by only a single lesser fairy. Non-magic fairy, bow-wielding fairy, whichever. And she is not nearly so bad as the four dudes. Leaping attack. It's really the worst. Every mini-boss that has it is, is just a pain. And they seem to be doing it more frequently against Velvet than against other dudes. And I went back and t because with Velvet, I had to go back and, you know, fight more things and, and actually level up. Whereas with the others, I didn't really have to level up, which needs a little extra help. So when I go back, I find that, you know, even when I'm when I, even when I go back to the area to build experience levels and eat things and collect things and fight dudes, even then they're still challenging. You, you know, because most of the time you go back to these places, they're totally not challenging. These guys still are. This pair of them gets me every time. Mostly with the leaping. And, again, mostly because they leap extra often against Velvet specifically. Now, I've never mentioned it, but with the two mini bosses, the combined health bar at the bottom is actually pretty clever. Because one of them is. One of them is essentially the full life bar, but cut in half. And the other one is a full life bar cut in half, but put on the end of it. So when you when you hit the one guy, say the, the one got, uh, with the health bar more on the left, it looks like both of their you know their combined health or whatever goes down, even though that's not the case. So it can be kind of deception deceptive, but on the whole, I think it's a, a neat way to accomplish what they need, which is to put you know two health bars there in the space of one. If this were Kingdom Hearts or something, they would just have like a little pip, maybe. And with most other games, they would just sort of stack up health bars, but they decided that their screen real estate wasn't up to the challenge or something. Maybe it was just the first thing they came up with, and it is a pretty elegant solution, of things considered. And it's frequent enough that you fight multiple mini-bosses in the same one. Even on normal difficulty, you will eventually encounter multi-mini-boss. And with Velvet in particular as the last and, you know, most challenging character, they expect a little more of you. The difficulty curve, even within, of course, within a single character goes up as you go along. But I think that the, the whole of the whole the five of them also will, um, it, ha it has a kind of growing effect as you go along too. Either that or they just figured out that, you know, Velvet is the hardest to use and stuck her on the end because of that. I've decided to start using the Power Stone with Velvet here because she needs to do lots and lots of attacks. Mm, for reasons that you're seeing. And the Madrigor is running all over the place. This fight, in particular, is all about taking out the wizards first. Kill them wizards. As you can see, even earlier on, one of them just straight up healed herself back to full. And another wasted crit. Shameful. For the most part, these guys from their little drops will drop like one regnanable silver or like a hot cross bone or something. It's like, oh, well, thanks guy. Honestly, I'll take the change over you know, most anything else they have, because at this point, you know, my inventory is so small that money is alright. That mulberry seed, though, that's possible. That's probably the most useful thing they can drop, honestly, because those can easily become either just, you know, a quick little bit of health for me, at food level 11, probably not so much. But their more important use is to be two fruits off of five Fozons, each of, each of which will add five to a potion number when you combine it. Are we finally done with wizards? 
have you... Do you have enough wizards? Am I going to have to eat a carrot? Maybe I didn't mention that before. I certainly... Well, I don't know about certainly. I've had a lot of footage so far, so I'm not going to say what I certainly have or have not done on camera by this point. But I most likely have not shown you guys eating Madrigoras, which you can do. Even the Habaneristos, even though they're hot, you can eat those too. Any of them that you just like use as an item, your character will eat, and then you'll get 10 HP back. So if you really, really need 10 HP, you can, you can get it by eating an onion. Not enough with the healing. Oh, they're just the worst. It doesn't help matters that this is the most challenging area in the entire stage. The five-star area. But you probably figured that out by now, astute. Oh, when they're... Ah, what I didn't do and what I should have done. When they're fading out like that, the treasure chest, if you hit them with any attack, even if the attack would not open it, it will still, like, refresh the box so it doesn't fade out as quickly. I also think that her homing attack will open treasure chests, but I'm not sure. I seem to recall doing it at least once. These guys seem to be dr dropping a lot of treasure, too. She really is a thief, how about that? You know, sneaking around, well... <laughs> Again, like I said, not really sneaking around, per se. Princess? Clean up that inventory. Probably be worthwhile at this point to sell the ancient crystal, but I'm not certain whether or not I might want to use it, in fact. Because Velvet is more fragile than the others, and having a secret you know, do-over for half your health bar can be pretty great. And, you know, depending on how high, how high your health goes, that can be worth, you know, Five, six hundred HP, princess, and a quick heal that does that is pretty. What brings great. you here? Oh, are you shopping? So this is the puka that Master Croy referred to, who can transport himself to the fairy kingdom. That's that was that was that little line. But it's all done. Get done with the area. Off to fight whoever's here. Who could that be? intrude in the palace while my mother is away in battle. Oh no! Princess Mercedes! What? You... Grandfather, did something happen? A thief defeated the knights and snuck into the palace. A thief with moxie! This woman is that thief. I can see that. You have something of ours. Return my mother's ring immediately. What was that? Is that the ring to Trell? This ring is at the center of this debacle. It belongs to Valentine. This abominable treasure has no place with fairies. It seems there's more to this story. But you are mistaken. The rightful owner of that ring surrendered it to us. It is ours. King Valentine passed away during the disaster. Your lies are transparent. I tell no lie. The ring was given to our queen. By the surviving Prince of Valentine. <gasps> prince? It can't be... Ingwe. Even if that's the case, I cannot return the ring. You're not going anywhere! Guards! Guards! Yes, with relish, once again, we fight Mercedes. The difficult part of this fight is that, yeah, you're gonna see it. For whatever reason, Mercedes has a ton of hit points. I don't get it. I mean, it's some, it's probably some combination of me not having very much attack power and her having a shitload of hit points, but even still, it is just absurd. I feel like I'm getting a good meaty combo in on her and it only takes out a little bit terrible. The key with this fight is to 
you know, focus on, on her, in fact, because the other is, eh, take him or leave him. They're just sort of going to dirtle around and shoot the stray arrow or whatever at you, but Mercedes shots are way more damaging. Her powerful shot than like, a large one, that can knock you on your ass. And if you focus on her, you can stun her and give her fewer opportunities to shoot you at all. So really, we want to just chase her down as best we can. And if I catch the other guys, fine. That's, that's fine. That one, I have no excuse for. I ran headlong into that. Mercedes, like any other Cypher wielder you fight, can absorb the stray fosons that her minions leave behind when they die. In this case, it'll give her a little bit of hit points when, uh, when you do... When she does, I, I'm not the one absorbing. Well, now I am. You know, and you know, I was telling them. See, didn't that feel great? What a big meaty combo. And then, you know, it's like, oh, okay, she's still she's still kicking here. My, my opponent starts at a huge life here. That right there is the compelling reason to use Velvet's air attack almost exclusively. The fact that each hit of the many hit combo that follows in the air assault can be a critical is basically Velvet's only offensive greatness as far as any raw power goes. Me, okay, just click this up and zoom back over here. I might not have mentioned this, but when you swing, that's the jump and then double jump and then the third jump is a, is a little swing effect. Velvet has a whole slew of invulnerability frames through that and basically can't take damage. Now, you can get hit at the beginning and at, at the end, but you're pretty much safe through the middle, and you can use that technique to dodge very specific things. Uh, not so much for Mercedes here, like, you could use it to pretty much dodge the single large shot that she occasionally does, but beyond that, her little hits are, are you know, since there's so many, it's, it's harder to, uh, to get at them. And the bitch decides to run away. Get back here! Ooh, you're so frustrating. At this point, I'm just trying to finish the fight by whatever means. And a lucky critical does- And they were about to kill me! You saw the ancient crystal shatter. I was upset about that. Fairies are jerks. Velvet. I stole from thieves. I'm relieved that you're alright. I'm relieved that you're- worried. Master. We, we can't let ourselves be seen. Hurry, we have to hide. So this is the ring that can stop the cauldron. Did, did you hear him? This whole area is a war zone right now. No one will be able to come search for it. Father, is the king really trying to create another disaster? I know not the king's mind. But if the king wishes to use the cauldron for atrocity once again, the only one able to stop him is the one who knew him in life. It will be up to Princess Velvet. But I cannot bear to see the princess in such danger. I cannot believe what I'm hearing. I did not give you that chain so you could act like a thief. Ingwe. Have you any idea how dangerous that ring is? Uh, you know, more, more or less. Let me hold on to it, Velvet. No, it's dangerous. Give me the ring. How do you know about this? We are twins. There is nothing you can hide from me. You said that Scaldi has friends in the Fairy Kingdom. Did you not? If that chain makes you act so irrationally, shall I take it away? Don't glare at me like that. I'm just worried about you. I'm sorry if I've upset you. Please, just leave me alone. I will eventually. 
eventually get that ring. But first, how can I stop the prattling of those old men who talk of nothing but Titrell? <laughs>